What up? This is Rama Srin at the LA Asian Pacific Film Festival 2018, and it's been a great event. And I'm here with Kath. Yes. For the film. The Fever and the Fret. The Fever and the Fret. Now, um, I haven't had the chance to screen it yet. Uh, I read the synopsis for my fans briefly. What it's about? Sure. Um, the Fever and the Fret is it's an experimental surreal feature. Um, it's about a young girl in high school who has these birthmarks across her face, and she's bullied because of the birthmarks. And then she starts to hallucinate another planet. I'm going to leave it at that. All right. Leave the rest to your imagination. <laughs> no spoilers, no spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, I take it, you know, the, the character encountering other beings and going to other planets, that it would involve uh, heavy visual effects uh, and stuff? You would think that, but um, what it, it's a bit more sparse than that. I mean, if I had the money, I would have done exactly what you just described. That's right. So, Imagine that, but with zero money, and then you <laughs> cool. picture what the film is like. Yeah. All right, all right. So, well, that goes with my next question. What's the uh, the challenges of being an independent filmmaker when you tackle such a story? I guess just all the cliched challenges. I mean, but I think one thing that is sort of discussed, like, in person, but never in magazines or, you know, film school is just there are an infinite number of obstacles and problems that you're never prepared for until they hit you that day. And then you have to think on your feet and solve that problem that day. And at first, it's so overwhelming that you can't sleep and you're a person who does not sleep. And then you enter this mindset where you're just used to being assaulted by unthinkable problems. Like our, our trailer in Iceland sank into quicksand. <gasps> And that oh, no. is something that <laughs> no one could have prepared me for. Oh, no. But because at that point I was so emotionally defeated, I was just waited for someone to come pull the trailer out of the quicksand. So the trailer was recovered? It was okay. recovered. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we beat up that van. It was... Man, those quicksands, bad. I tell you. <laughs> yeah. Quicksand. Such a nuisance. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you think with all the practice you get with quicksand, imagining it as a child, that you'd be able to navigate real-life quicksand, but it, it's just not as exciting as childhood quicksand. It's a different ball game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, talk a bit about um, the cast. You know, we, we're here celebrating diversity, you know, yes. Asian Film Festival. Yes. Talk a bit about that aspect. Sure. So the reason why I am here at the LA Asian Film Festival is because uh, Asian Pacific Film Festival I wrote this movie for my actress, Adelina Mosco. Okay. And um, I am in love with her as an artist. She's just the most amazing actress. And I want the world to see my actress and the supporting cast. We cast around her. She plays a young Filipino-American girl. So we had to cast her parents, uh, I mean, her grandparents, her cousin, her family, her community. So we, without my really realizing it would happen, we had an all Filipino cast. Cool. And because I love actors, we really got into like rehearsing and preparing and these actors act their hearts out and I want the world to see my actors. I really want them to be seen and loved and so I'm thrilled that they can be seen here at the LA Asian Pacific Film Festival. Yeah, I was gonna say, so it's fitting that it, it's mm -hmm. being shown here. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. So as I'm wanting that to my final questions, uh, I know you can't spill about what other beings or what other planets I'll give it's, you a description it's, it's not as exciting as you think <laughs> okay all right. that, that's just like teasers to make you interested and then teasers. when you see it you'll be like that that was the other being but yeah, yeah. but the synopsis also makes it uh, seem as if she encounters also another uh, realization on yes. how she deals with her life because of those adventures correct uh, that is correct yeah yes. so what do you hope the audience will take away from the themes of the fever and the fret um that depends, because my film is nihilistic, so if okay. you're a sincere moviegoer, you might be a little disappointed by how nihilistic my film is, but if you're already dead inside, you hate life, and you're nihilistic, then you'll see this movie and feel that your worldview is confirmed. Well, why, why did you decide that as your storytelling approach, the nihilistic I approach? I didn't realize I was massively depressed oh. at the time. That's cool. Now I'm fine. Like, when I stopped being depressed, I was like, wow, that was really dark. My movie is really horrible. <laughs> it's just how it panned out. Um, so when I look at the movie, I'm like, I guess that's just how I was feeling <laughs> yeah. when I made it. Yeah. I read you up. You also made some short films. I went to Slam Dance, correct? Yes, that's correct. All right, so you've been in the festival circuit for quite some time. Talk about, uh, for my fans who are aspiring filmmakers, mm -hmm. you know, trying to struggle through the, you know, low budget, trying to make it 
try to make their story on the screen. What's your advice to them? I feel like I'm the wrong person to ask because I've struggled for so long unsuccessfully. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing that, that pulled me out of my zone of unsuccess was um, just getting more of a clue of how the professional world works. Mm -hmm. I thought that my passion and my ideas and my uh, arrogant idea that I had talent would be enough. I thought that was all it would take because when I looked at my favorite directors, those were the characteristics they were displaying. Mm. But it's so much more than that. It's being able to work with other people. It's knowing what professional standards are expected of you. Mm. Um, and I had no clue. I'm not very socially clued in person. And so those were the skills I was lacking. And maybe each person, um, you know, there's different departments of skills that you need to be a filmmaker, both like artistic and social and technical. So try and find out what are all the different skill sets that are required in filmmaking and where you are lacking and what you can contribute to others. Now, so it helps if you submit your films to Slam Dance and all these uh, festivals, right? I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know how it works because I, I wonder if like when I got into Slam Dance it was a fluke because I just don't know. There's okay. so many good films that don't get into these festivals. I think the competition is so high. That's another thing people aren't really made aware of. I didn't know like how intense the competition is. There are hundreds of really good films that like maybe the Slam Dance Committee had 12 amazing films. They could only choose six. Mm -hmm. And then those six films keep on hammering away at all the other major film festivals. And just by sheer lottery, bad luck, just don't make it. And there are, are famous cases of that. I think, did you ever see that movie, like The Wolfman's Hammer? I have not. Okay, so it's this brilliant indie movie, and it became famous for not having gotten into a single festival. Wow. And the filmmaker, just out of desperation, said, I'm going to put it on YouTube. And then a bunch of execs from Hollywood watched it and were like, wow, this is really good. Why hasn't it been accepted to a festival? So, like, it's way harder it's just impossible. It is a lottery. The only reason that you should keep being a filmmaker is because you have no alternative because you just love movies so much. Yeah, and there's a lot of other outlets, like you said, YouTube, right? There's yeah. a lot of platforms that you can go to. Yeah, you have to start doing it for the, the love of the movie itself, no matter where it ends up. Like, that is out of your hands. Oh, last question. So what's the follow-up to The Fever and the Fred? Any uh, upcoming projects that uh, you're yes. developing? I'm trying. So I have a couple of feature scripts that I'm working on, and it's... I don't know where to go from there. So I'm, I'm working with a wonderful consultancy called Roadmap uh, Writers Group. Mm -hmm. um, it's based in LA and they have real live human execs and agents and managers who consult with you and tell you where your weak spots are and what your next steps should be. So I'm looking at that as my actual film school because these are people who are working who Tell me where to go. Can we expect the next story to be more lighthearted? <laughs> I'm not sure. Yes, I'm going to say a hard yes. I don't think I could ever go as, <laughs> as low as this one. I don't know what was wrong. It just... no, no, no. I'm still looking forward to screening The Finger in the Press. Thank you so much. So thank you, Ron. We're supporting you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much okay. for the time. May the fourth be with you. May the fourth be with you. <laughs>